At six months old, she was starring in TV commercials. After a year at Harvard, she was set on TV news. Now Melissa Francis tells us about the call she got from Fox that took her career to a whole new level. This is Media Beat. Look, things change. Anyone with a camera and a computer is going to pay attention to where they are. We all do. We evolve. Melissa Francis, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So after nine years with CNBC, you get a call from Roger Ailes, and he says what? He says, uh, hey, you want to come join the Fox family? And you know, I mean, he's a legend in the business. Everyone knows that. I mean, he invented CNBC. He invented Maria Bartiromo. He invented Fox out of thin air. So I was, you know, I was very happy at CNBC. I had no intention of going, but when you get that call, and then I went and met with him for hours and sat down and talked about his vision for the network over time and, um, you know, what he could see me doing, it was, I was sold immediately. And six months in, are you feeling like you're delivering on what he wanted and you're comfortable doing what you're doing? I hope I'm delivering on what he wanted. As far as I'm concerned, it's even better than I imagined. I mean, the amazing thing about Fox is that they really set you loose to be as creative as you can. You know, he said to me, we're never going to tell you what to say. Um, you know, don't do O'Reilly. Just you do you. Be yourself. And they've really lived up to that and I'm having a great time. And no stranger to television. You've been on TV since about six months old, right? Right. The Johnson & Johnson commercial, and you did about 100 commercials after that. Yeah. Uh, you must have been like a bazillionaire by the time you were <laughs> 16 years old. I mean... No, no, no. I did work steadily my whole life, though. I mean, it was... Uh, I, you know, I'm one of the people that loved it. There are a lot of kids that come out of the business and say that they hated it, and I don't know where they were working or what they were doing, but... You know, you have to like it, I think, to get hired again and again, because if, if you have kids, you know kids are not inherently cooperative. Mm -hmm. So they have to be liking what they're doing in order to cooperate and do a good job. And so I, I liked it. You'd better give it to me if you don't want trouble. I don't have to, and you don't scare me. And you were at least the third actress named Melissa to join Little House on the Prairie. That's spooky, right? Yeah, a little bit. And you joined it season eight. Uh, so, right? Season it's seven or eight, I can't remember, something like that, yeah. Uh, any stories uh, that you can tell us, uh, Michael Landon stories, Jason Bateman stories? Oh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, they were really set up for kids on that set and to, you know, keep kids happy. And so we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, Michael Landon, uh, he was very tight with the buck. He was very efficient with the crew, but he liked to pull pranks. And there were a couple times, I mean, there was one time that he took off his hat and, you know, looked into the scenery, but, you know, very seriously, and a tarantula crawled down the front of his face. And all the kids that were looking, we all screamed our lungs out. Uh, and it was just, he had found a tarantula on the floor of the Simi Valley Desert and stuck it on top of his head just to make us all freak out, which I think was quite a risk for a joke. Yeah. But stuff like that happened all the time. We had a blast. And you didn't let all that fame and all that money go to your head. You didn't, weren't hanging out with any Corys in, in Hollywood, at least, that we know about, right? No, my parents kept me, you know, in school, and they sort of said, school is your number one job. You know, you have to get straight A's no matter what. That's your primary job. And this other thing that we're doing is great, but it's secondary. And so, you know, I kept up with my schoolwork and, and, you know, every day that I wasn't at the set, I was back in school. I was still in Brownies. I was still in Girl Scouts, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I was one of the few that had a regular life. There were a lot of people who, you know, were homeschooled, which was sort of a euphemism for they weren't going to school when they weren't working. Mm -hmm. And I think those are a lot of the kids that ended up getting into trouble over time. They probably would have no matter what they were doing. All right. And you went one better. You went all the way east and went to Harvard. What was... what? went into that decision? Well, I actually, you know, I had been in acting my whole entire life all the way until when I left for college. And so I wanted to go someplace where I didn't have the option of going to LA and going on auditions. And, you know, Stanford had been something that I considered. I went there for summer school and I still flew back and went on auditions. And I was like, you know what, I've got to make a real break from this and see if it calls me and it's what I really want to do with my life or if I want to do something entirely different. And this will be the way to tell for sure. And when I got there, at first it was like quitting something cold turkey. And then I thought, you know what, there's you know, a whole other world out there of things to do. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do something else. So no acting at all while you were at Harvard? No, no, I didn't do any plays or anything. I went straight into news. You know, my first internship was for a local Fox affiliate in LA the first summer um, after school. And I, it was an adrenaline rush. You know, it was crazy. Everybody screamed at each other and raced for deadline. It was right out of broadcast news. And I was hooked. Because yeah. to me, it was... Uh, you know, the things that you like about acting, the performance aspect, but it was so fly by the seat of your pants. It was so unscripted. You have no support. Um, and it was much more your own voice, what's coming out of your head, your brain, versus saying someone else's words. And in the end, that's what acting became to me that I didn't love, was that it was always someone else's words, someone else's thoughts. 
But you must have been riding the horses on the set of Little House because you were the <laughs> captain of the polo team. You know, at everyone Harvard? picks up on that, I guess, because it's just <laughs> so silly. It's a pretty but, rare um, thing. It I just is on the team, but you're the captain of the team. As right, well. right. No, I so I I rode horses competitively growing up, and then when I got to college, um, I noticed that. There, were, there was more beer and more cute guys on the polo team than on the equestrian team. The equestrian team was a little nerdy. So oh, really? I thought, let me give this a shot. I had never done it before, but it's mainly about being able to ride a horse at a really fast speed and being very tough. Because you crash into the other horses intentionally while you're going along to kind of knock them off the line of the ball. So I sort of got into it for the guys in the party after the match, and then I ended up loving team? the actual sport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was co-ed practices when you actually compete at single sex, but you know we'd go away to tournaments together, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was great, but it's very aggressive. I mean, I would come back cut and bruised, and it's t it's rough. Yeah. It's rough.